Can you figure out how the phases of the moon work? So the premise of these videos is the idea that figuring something out for yourself means you learn it much better than you would if someone just handed you the answer because you intuitively understand it. And that helps you remember it much better too. The phases of the moon are my favorite example of this because it's something that we've all seen for ourselves and almost all of us were taught what actually causes them when we were little kids. But a surprising number of us don't remember anymore. A lot of people even assume they remember just because they knew it at some point, but if you were to actually stop and think about it or try to explain it to a child, for example, do you know right off the top of your head the actual mechanisms of what's happening? If you do, then great, but I bet you'll still learn a lot by watching this video. And if not, allow me to try and help you figure it out for yourself. I'll give you all the information you need to figure it out right up front. It's going to be helpful to draw it out and or use things to represent the sun, the moon, and the earth. To represent my Earth, I conveniently have this beach ball globe. Keeping things in scale, how big do you think the moon would be? The size of a golf ball? A softball? A cantaloupe? Well, the usual analogy is that if the Earth were a basketball, the moon would be about the size of a tennis ball. So since my globe here is a little bit bigger than a basketball, I got something just a little bit bigger than a tennis ball, I have this baseball to represent my moon. Now, if this were the Earth and this were the moon, how far apart would they be? Do you think they'd be this far apart? More like here? Way out here? In reality, at this scale, the moon would have to be almost 8 meters, or about 25 feet away, right about here. Also, at this scale, how big do you think the sun would be? Like, this big maybe? The size of a person? The size of a car? It would actually be just under 30 meters, or over 90 feet across. That's taller than an 8-story building, and that building would have to be about 3 kilometers, or almost 2 miles away. But for the purposes of figuring out the phases of the moon, we don't have to keep the distances in scale. Okay, another fact that you'll need to know is that if we're looking at everything from above, the Earth orbits the Sun counterclockwise, and the Moon orbits the Earth counterclockwise too, and they do so in the same plane, which means the Moon isn't orbiting like this or like this. If the Earth is orbiting horizontal, the Moon orbits horizontally too. And then lastly, it takes a year for the Earth to go all the way around the Sun, but only 27 days for the Moon to go around the Earth. That means that in the time that it takes the Moon to complete an orbit, the Earth has gone less than 1 13th of the way around the Sun. So for our purposes here, we can neglect the effect of the Earth moving and pretend that the Earth and the Sun stay in the same place for one orbit of the Moon. And that's it. That's all you need to know to be able to figure out why the Moon orbiting around us causes those phases. Try drawing out some of the different stages of the moon's orbit. Think about which sides are lit up, which sides are in shadow, and which side of the moon you can see from the Earth at different stages. Pause the video now and see if you can figure it out. And if you can't, then no worries. When you start the video again, I'll explain everything, and you'll still have gotten your brain engaged and primed to really learn better than it would if I had just handed you the answer in the first 20 seconds of this video. Alright, hopefully you figured it out, but if not, no worries. Even if you got it, you'll want to stick around, not only to confirm that you were right, but also because I'm going to tell you a lot of really cool stuff about the moon. So, first of all, if the sun is over here, then the sides facing it will be lit up, and the other sides will be in shadow. So on this side of the Earth, it's daytime, and on this side, it's nighttime. The Earth is also spinning counterclockwise, which is why the sun appears to rise in the east and set in the west. Think about it. Imagine we're in South America. This way would be east, and this way would be west. If you're the sun shining on the Earth this way, then it'd be nighttime when it's on this side of the planet, and then as it turns, the sun appears to be rising from the east. And then as it continues spinning, the sun disappears to the west. Now, the moon orbits around us this way. So when it's right here, what's it going to look like from our perspective here on Earth? Well, it's going to look like the left half of the moon is lit up, while the shadowed right half of the moon seems like it disappears against the dark background of the night sky. But that's only if you're standing at the North Pole. If you're at the equator, for example, this way seems like up. So it would actually look like the top half of the moon is lit up. Or, if you're standing somewhere in between, it might look like the half of the moon that's lit up is at a diagonal. Then, when the moon gets to this point in its orbit, we can only see about a quarter of it. So, from our perspective here on Earth, it's going to look like a crescent moon. But when the moon is positioned between us and the sun, the side that we can see is completely covered in shadow, and that's a new moon. Also, there's no such thing as the dark side of the moon. The moon also rotates on its axis, but exactly one time per orbit, which means the same side is always facing us. We never used to know what the far side of the moon looked like. For all we knew, there could have been a big smiley face over there. It wasn't until we sent satellites and people around the moon that we actually found out what the other side looks like. Then, as it continues around, from the Earth's perspective, it becomes a crescent lit up on the right side. Here, the right half is lit up. Here, about three quarters of it is lit up on the right side, and when the moon is on the opposite side of us from the sun, the side of the moon that faces us is completely lit up, and that's a full moon. 
Also, I mentioned how the moon orbits us in the same plane as we orbit the sun, so you might be wondering why the shadow of the Earth doesn't block out the moon during a full moon when it's on the opposite side of us from the sun. Well, the answer is that sometimes it does, and that's called a lunar eclipse. That's also why lunar eclipses only ever happen during a full moon, never a crescent moon or anything else. But eclipses are pretty rare, because even though the orbits are almost exactly parallel, they're not completely perfect, so usually the moon is passing just above or below the shadow of the Earth. Plus, the moon is so far away and moving fast enough that it's only directly in line with us and the sun for a few hours, which is why eclipses only last that long when they do happen. When the moon gets to here, the shadow starts to come back around the right side, and finally, 27 days later, it's back to where we started. And that's how the phases of the moon work. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in more lessons like this, eventually there will be a playlist that you can click on right here that'll take you to more videos where I try to help you figure out cool things for yourself. Or subscribe if you want an update whenever a new one comes out. Thanks for watching.